Thanks to the discovery of the tail of the 2014 specimen of Spinosaurus, there is very little doubt among most researchers that Spinosaurus was semi or fully aquatic. The evidence has existed since the tragic life story of German paleontologist Ernst Stromer brought this discovery to the textbooks. Ever since its description over 100 years ago, evidence has continued to pile up proving this beast was a riverine leviathan, with all the bells and whistles nature selected for it. The hypothesis that Spinosaurus was a semi or fully aquatic animal has been met with opposition for years because of its challenge to decades old ideas on dinosaur ecology, evolution, and biology. Non-avian dinosaurs just don't swim, right? The list of data that now exists to prove the animal was semi or fully aquatic is comprehensive. The nostrils are pointed upwards and backwards, set near the eyes. The toe claws are wide and flattened from top to bottom. The toes splay outwards to create a super wide footprint. The super long, super thin neural spines sprouting from the tail vertebrae provide a tail fin, a small pelvis, short legs, a disproportionately short femur, thick, heavy bones without much hollowness, circumstantial evidence in the snout sensors, a long, thin snout, and long, straight, conical teeth. Comparisons with piscivorous fish have been used to support piscivory in the spined reptile. A phylogenetic analysis of Spinosaurus places it and its closest relatives as relatively closely related to the European Baryonyx. Baryonyx has been found with acid-etched fish scales preserved in its ribcage, suggesting it was a piscivore. This means it is likely Spinosaurus was one as well. Isotopic evidence has been used to suggest Spinosaurus was an aquatic animal. The extremely diverse web of data all screams out in vain that Spinosaurus was a water dinosaur. Anyone at this point seriously claiming it wasn't is delusional. Though there are a few weird contradictions here and there, there now exists extraordinary evidence to prove the extraordinary claim that Spinosaurus is the first known non-avian dinosaur to return to the water. Just when you thought the stream of new finds and data on the charismatic finback would end, BAM! A brand new study is out. This time, instead of evidence based on the skeletal remains of the dinosaur, or circumstantial evidence, or even phylogenetic analyses, we can add taphonomy to the list of techniques getting involved. The new study, by a group of seven scientists, including students from the University of Portsmouth and University of Detroit Mercy, as well as Dr. Nizar Ibrahim himself, was published in the journal Cretaceous Research. A new locality has been discovered, which was home to over 1,000 Spinosaurus teeth, as well as teeth from the saw-skate Onchopristus and some other dinosaurs. This new locality consists of natural exposures at the foot of the Ikhfnofsa escarpment near the northern margin of the Tafilalt Basin in southeastern Morocco. The researchers found the locality while on reconnaissance fieldwork. Reconnaissance fieldwork, as the name suggests, includes hiking around looking for outcrops and pieces of bones sticking out of the ground, which might lead a trail of bones to the source. The research group found a bone bed at the base of a sandstone channel, which was used by local fossil diggers. You see, fossils are a good business in Morocco. People who live where fossils are found are usually quite poor, and to make ends meet, they sell off as many fossils as they can, thereby creating a fossil black market. It's this fossil black market Dr. Nizar Ibrahim waded through in order to find Spinosaurus fossils and where they might be found which led to the 2014 discovery and the tail discovery of early mid-2020. The abandoned dig sites the crew found were littered with large blocks of super hard sandstone, rich in the teeth of Spinosaurus and the teeth and vertebrae of Onchopristus. The study also included weathered soil dumps as part of their materials tested. On top of that, one and a half kilometers away from the first stop, the team found an active fossil mine and conversed with the locals. They walked away from the site, having purchased a total of 1,261 fossil fragments. Unlike many of the Spinosaur specimens currently in Moroccan museum collections, these fragments have an exact location and exact layer of rock attached to them. Since the research team were literally at the place these fossils were being excavated, they made note of the exact layer of rock in which the fossils were embedded. 
They came from a layer of the Chemchem group, called the Ephesoane Formation. So, what's the point? Spinosaurus teeth are notoriously some of the most common fossils from this region. You see them all the time at fossil gem and mineral shows. The animals shed hundreds of them over their lifetime, so it's no surprise. The surprise with this study is the sheer number of teeth, the ratios of fossils found, and their location. Site 1 had a total of 926 vertebrate fossils. 313 of those fossils were teeth. Six tooth types were found in Site 1, with 48% of those teeth belonging to Spinosaurus. How did the researchers know they were Spinosaurus teeth? Despite working on Spinosaurus remains for over a decade, they were able to compare them to known Spinosaurus teeth, and they could infer that they belonged to Spinosaurus because there aren't any other species of dinosaurs known from this region and time that had teeth like Spinosaurus, other than Spinosaurus. The only other tooth to outnumber Spinosaurus was the saw-skate Onchopristus. There was a single tooth fragment from a Carcharodontosaurus-like animal as well. Site 2 had a lot more diversity in the fossils collected. Site 2 was where the 1,226 fossils were purchased from the local miners. All of these 1,261 fossils come from the exact same horizon of rock, meaning they can be reliably assumed to come from the same time and place. Site 2 had 12 tooth types and 928 tooth specimens. The most numerous tooth type found at Site 2 with a grand total of 407, were those of Spinosaurus, yet again. That's about 43% of the teeth the research team sampled. Second most common were of Onchopristus, at 375 specimens. Site 2 also had a few specimens of other theropods, pterosaurs, and crocodiles. Taphonomy is the study of how organisms decay and become fossilized. It's basically the paleo-detective work which goes into most studies on fossil organisms. In the case of the new Spinosaurus study, Taphonomy tells you the extreme abundance of Spinosaurus and Onchopristus teeth at both sites, with exclusion of other animal fossils, can be explained with Spinosaurus as an aquatic animal. Overall, terrestrial animal teeth should be rare in rocks formed from river sediments, since animals don't usually stumble into rivers as they die. This is the case with the confirmed terrestrial animal teeth which were found at both Site 1 and Site 2. They were only single-digit percentages of the total specimens. Onchopristus tooth barbs should be very common as that is where they lived. They were also elasmobranchs, the group which contains sharks, rays, and skates. This makes them really good at churning out large sums of teeth, which would easily sink to the river bottoms and fossilize. With the extreme abundance of Spinosaurus teeth, it can now be said that Spinosaurus did the same. They lived large amounts of their lives in the water and shed tons of teeth all over the river bottoms. If they were terrestrial, you'd simply not be seeing so many teeth in rocks deposited from rivers. Who knew that all it took was a smile only a mother could love? Subscribe to consume some delicious contento. Trash the like button, scrape out a comment, and blast the notification bell just so you're in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. A very special thanks to my patrons Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Ed Peretz, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, Jacob Spencer, Dana Manchester, Clayton Maxfield, and Tron. If you'd like to support my channel and receive some extra content, pledge to my Patreon at any tier you want.